Hey Measuring Hero, Jay here. Today we thought we would come back to the customer center here in Oberkoken to do a little bit of a deeper dive into the topics of medical. So uh, we decided to come and talk to Michael in our new medical corner. Michael, thanks for coming and joining. Thanks for coming. Um, thanks for having me again, Jay. And welcome to our brand new medical corner, which you have mentioned already uh, within our customer center. Yeah, it's really cool to see just how important the topic of uh, medical and uh, manufacturing and medical is to us that we're just really pushing forward with it, investing. We definitely do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let's dive right in because I know the last time we spoke, we talked about uh, orthopedic implants, which ended up for me to be really timely because my father actually is getting a new hip. Okay. And uh, uh, it was really nice for us to go through some of what happens because uh, yeah, it became really personal for me. Uh, so I'm excited to learn about uh, medical plastics today, which I got to admit, I'm the foggiest clue what that is. So can we start at the beginning? Like what is medical plastics? I try to help you, okay? If we talk about medical plastics, we talk about syringes, we talk about inhalers, we talk about pumps of any kind of um, injector pens. And here I would split this into two groups, let's say. On the one hand side, very basic medical plastic pieces out of one component. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand side, yeah, more complex plastic pieces um, out of multi-material as an assembly with a mechanical function and sometimes even with an electronical component inside. Okay, yeah, that sounds really important. Um, now, I remember from our discussion last time that there were really high regulations on the orthopedic implants, which makes sense because they go in the body. Uh, are there such high regulations uh, on these medical plastics as well? There are. So, of course, an inhaler is not implanted into the human body, hopefully, but nevertheless, um, these devices can still have a direct impact to people's life. Mm -hmm. So just think about an insulin pen, mm -hmm. that device mm -hmm. must always work reliable and under all circumstance. And therefore, I would say we revisit here the topic of a highly regulated industry with all the regulations, guidelines, uh, like FDA 21, CFR Part 11 and so on. And this is always mandatory. Wow, wow, that's insane. So all of those highly regulated uh, uh, processes that we had to go through because it went in the body uh, also apply to these plastic parts. Because yeah, it makes sense. I mean, an insulin pen is really important, but okay. So I'm spinning. Uh, what are actually the differences between these measuring these parts? So for us, it's definitely the quantity of parts which have to be measured. So while we have to measure usually 100% of all the produced orthopedic implants, we just have to measure a certain percentage of the produced medical plastic pieces. But still, this percentage of produced medical plastic pieces is several magnitudes higher uh, than what we have to measure on the orthopedic implant side. Sure, wow, that's crazy. But it makes sense. I mean, on an orthopedic, orthopedic implant, you have to just make sure the whole thing's perfect. Uh, um, I think what I'm hearing, uh, we want to definitely make sure with these plastics that the process is perfect so that we can guarantee uh, rolling through some. Now, I understand if we're talking about process, there's probably a methodology around that. Do, do, we, do we understand what the, what the phase gates or the, the, the production gates are? Uh, we do, we do. And last time, I think I explained a little bit to you the blue mm -hmm. line we had um, through these, um, yeah, for our orthopedic implant uh -huh. processes. And this time I will show you the blue line we have now for the medical plastic oh, cool. pieces. And this is more or less out of two big yeah, process steps. The first is from the design to the tool assembly or correction. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand side, we have the real yeah, injection molding process sure. from the raw material to the finished part. And if I jump into that just for a second, we start here on the left hand side from the real initial design phase, 3D yeah. simulation of the uh, later product. Mm -hmm. Then we manufacture the tool, we assemble the tool and we help uh, with tool correction, of course. And then we really come into that yeah, precision injection molding process, mm -hmm. starting with the raw material, then the injection process, then the assembly, and then of course at the end we also have the filling process and the packaging of the goods. Oh, that's a lot of steps in there. Do we actually have any solutions for these gates? Yeah, and 
here I'm really happy yeah. due to our very broad portfolio. Yeah. I'm happy that we have solutions for all these quality gates within our portfolio. Wow, that's fantastic. I mean, I know uh, some of them here and there have been doing some, uh, some work uh, for uh, injection molding. So uh, uh, I'm actually excited to hear uh, some of the other processes that you have in here. Can we uh, have some deeper discussions about that? Definitely. So just take one of them. Yeah. Um, GD and T measurement of the final product. Yeah. So that's always mandatory. That's uh, a field where we are in since since decades. I would we say we know how to do that. <laughs> and um, this would be interesting for you because there are some some more challenges, especially due to performance topics. So sure. just imagine how many parts we have to measure. Yeah. We really investigated in the last years to boost up our performance of the systems. Um, and on the other hand side, there are also topics like the assembly control um, with CT. Mm -hmm. solutions. Um, looking for technical cleanliness or uh, visual inspection with our microscopy solutions sure. and so on. So there's a bunch of solutions we have and I would be happy to show all of them to you. Oh man, that would be great because actually now that you, now that I hear you saying that, you know, for me it was like, yeah, we have a solution to do, uh, to do final inspection, but yeah, what you just said makes a lot of sense because it's more than just knowing how to do final inspection. It is knowing what these customers need and being able to deliver not just what we can do, but what they need and kind of tailoring that. I, I'm really excited to, deep, to dive into uh, what these medical customers, in particular these plastics, uh, medical plastics customers need because it's gonna be an, in I feel like it's an interesting spin on what we do. It definitely is. Cool, definitely. cool. So we'll come back. I hope so. Yeah, you're yeah, always course. invited. <laughs> awesome, man. Michael, thank you Thanks. for an overview of medical plastics. I think we have a lot to talk about here, and I'm excited to do it. So uh, we'll see you soon, right? I hope so. Thanks for having me. Awesome, cool. And for you out there, uh, we hope you enjoy this brief overview of medical plastics, and we'll hope you'll join us again when we dive deeper into these. But for now, don't forget to stay safe and stay healthy. We'll see you next time.